Hello and welcome to this uh, lecture. So this is a demo uh, in the course for Insecure Systems Engineering. So I hope by now that you had actually installed the uh, virtual box and you would actually have this Ubuntu running as shown over here. So uh, in this first demo, uh, we will actually look at the basics. We will see how the stack is, over, is represented in, the, in a program. And uh, we will also use a tool called GDB, uh, which can be used to actually debug these programs. So the first thing to do is to start the terminal. So you could uh, do it like this, press that and uh, terminal. If you had downloaded the codes from the website that we specified, uh, you would actually see that there is a directory called nptel codes, you can go there. And uh, in this video, we will be looking at module 0. Okay. So this particular module uh, corresponds to the code that we have seen in the presentation. Um, so what it does is that it has a main function and an invocation to this function which is passed parameters 1, 2 and 3. And uh, as we have seen uh, in the previous videos, this function just defines two buffers, buffer 1 of 5 bytes and buffer 2 of 10 bytes. Now what we will see in this particular video is how we could actually analyze the stack uh, for this particular program. Okay, the first thing we do is to actually create the executable for this uh, particular program. Uh, we do that by uh, running make. So uh, uh, this make depends on uh, what is known as a make file. And uh, it's just a script. We will not go into the details about uh, what is present in the make file, but it's it is just a script that would uh, permit us to invoke GCC and specify various parameters for GCC, and finally obtain the corresponding executable. So uh, this particular line is what uh, the make file executes, and it has created an elf file uh, example one. So uh, some of these parameters for GCC like um, minus f no stack protector, minus z x6 stack and so on, uh, we will be actually seeing in a later video. For this particular video, we, we, we would explain two specific parameters that is minus m32 and minus g. So minus m32 indicates that the executable that is getting created in this case example 1 is a 32 bit executable and since this is an Intel virtual box or Intel machine. Therefore, the executable get that gets generated is a Intel 32 bit uh, executable. The minus G option that we specified over here ensures that debugging symbols get added into the executable. Now, as we seen in the second video today, uh, this particular file, the example one is an elf executable. So we've seen commands such as uh, read elf minus h and we can look at the uh, header of this particular executable and as we seen in the previous video we would obtain the header for example 1. So as seen uh, this is the identifier uh, 7f454c46 uh, which actually transforms to elf, elf in ASCII. Uh, other things to actually note is that for the Intel 80386 which indicates that it is a 32 bit executable. So we, as we have seen the entry point for this executable is at the location 0x8048CE0 and we have also seen the various other aspects such as the section headers and so on. So in particular uh, we can also use other uh, read elf uh, features such as read elf minus s to get more information about the section headers. So read l minus s uh, dot slash example 1 would give you more information about the various sections that are present in this particular executable. Okay. Uh, another uh, important tool that we will actually look at uh, to go more into detail about the example 1 executable is this obj dump. So if I do something like obj dump uh, minus minus 
disassemble all. Example one, uh, and I could actually store the output in example one dot list. What this particular uh, tool would do is that it would disassemble example one and store the disassembly in uh, this file called example one dot list. So we could open another tab and uh, look at example one dot list. We can search for main it's here. Uh, which is the main function and uh, we could also open um, the corresponding C code and see that in main there is a invocation to this function which is essentially done by this particular instruction uh, in this location 80483ED. So uh, these over here is the machine code for this instruction call uh, to function. And as we have seen uh, in the previous videos, the three parameters 1, 2 and 3 which is passed to the function are pushed onto the stack. So it is pushed uh, from the right that is push 3, push 2 and push 1. Over here we see the disassembly for this particular function and as we know there is a preamble in the function uh, where uh, the stack frame is created for this particular function. There are local space for the local variables over here. Uh, and finally the, the function returns. So uh, in this particular instruction we see that uh, there are 0x10 that is 16 bytes for the stack frame. So uh, this is because the total size for the local variables is 16 bytes. The next tool that we will actually look at is uh, the most important so that is uh, known as the GDB, GNU debugger. And uh, this tool can be used to actually debug this program, look at the various registers, look at the stack contents and so on. So the way to actually start this tool is uh, to provide GDB uh, with the executable example 1. So uh, GDB would provide you a prompt like this and uh, through this prompt you could actually send various commands such as, such as the list command which would list the uh, entire source code like this. Also, you could set breakpoints such as uh, B to line number 10. So what this means is that the program will execute until the breakpoint uh, at line number 10 is obtained. So this would mean that uh, the program will execute until line number 10 and then it will wait for further action. So uh, let us now run this particular program we run it by this command called r and what you see is that uh, gdb tells you that breakpoint 1 uh, at line 10 is reached. So we can look into the various registers which are present. Uh, uh, now at this particular point we can look at the various contents of the various registers and this can be done with uh, a command like info registers. Uh, EIP which stands for the instruction pointer, uh, ESP which stands for the stack pointer register and the EBP uh, which is the frame pointer uh, in the stack. So we look at this and we see that uh, EIP is pointing to a location over here that is 80483E7. Now if we go back to this code we see that the break the EIP is actually pointing to this location uh, over here. Essentially this instruction has to be executed. So we also see that the stack pointer is at the location 0xfffcf68. So what we could do is we could actually print the contents of the stack with a command like this x slash 32x uh, dollar ESP and uh, what this command does is that it essentially dumps the memory starting at the location specified by the stack pointer which in this case is fffffcf68 
And uh, this 32 over here indicates the number of memory locations that needs to be displayed. The second x over here specifies that uh, the display should be in hexadecimal values. So now we've seen that there is the uh, instruction pointer pointing to this location push 03 which has not yet been executed. We have a stack pointer which is uh, pointing to the location FFFFCF68 and the base pointer in this particular case is also FFFFCF68. The reason for this is that the stack pointer over here uh, in this instruction move ESP to be EBP, the stack pointer is in fact copied to the base pointer and therefore the stack pointer and the base pointer are the same. Now this uh, similar disassembly what we see using OBJ dump can be also obtained uh, with GDB. So all we need to do is specify this command called disassemble. Assemble and it would give us the exact same details. So we see that the instruction specified over here in GDB is the same instructions that are specified uh, in this listing which we have obtained from OBJ term. What is specified in GDB because GDB tells you the runtime status of the particular program is this additional point over here which tells you the current location where the program counter is present. Now we could execute each instruction individually by a command known as single step or single instruction uh, and we shorten this command like si. So when we specify si, a single instruction, in this case the push instruction would get executed and we will actually look at this. So uh, it says that this instruction which ends in 4A3E7 has executed and we would also see if we disassemble again that the program counter or the instruction pointer has moved to the next instruction. We can also see the effect on the stack by dumping uh, the stack contents as we have done before. So that uh, we have done by like this x 32x dollar um, ESP and we see uh, that there is a difference here that the contents of 3 has been pushed onto the stack single step through the next instruction uh, like this and one more instruction like this and then look at the stack again and we see that all the parameters 1, 2 and 3 have been pushed onto the stack. The, inst the instruction pointer now is pointing to uh, this call instruction. So as we have seen in the previous video when there is a call instruction or uh, what is done is that uh, this particular address 80483db is moved into the instruction pointer. At the same time, the instruction of the next address that is 080483f2 gets pushed onto the stack. So let us see how this happens with a single instruction. Okay, so we would uh, uh, look at the stack again and would we'll see that the next instruction uh, 08483 f2 which is the return address uh, is pushed onto the stack. At the same time if you look at the contents of the registers we see that the instruction pointer that is the EIP is pointing to a location 8048 3 db which is the start of this particular function. Now as we have seen in the previous video what this function initially does in its preamble is that it pushes the into the stack that is a pre previous frame pointer into the stack. It moves the stack pointer to the base pointer and then uh, this sub subtract instruction allocates 16 bytes of data in the stack. So let us see this happening using three instructions. So I can just specify SI3 which means that three instructions have to be executed okay and uh, if I disassemble uh, it over here I see that uh, these three instructions push EBP move 
ESP to EBP and subtracts 16 from ESP has been executed. So I could uh, look at the contents of the stack again. Uh, I'd like follows. And what we see is that now the stack has actually gone down to FFFFCF44. And the reason for this is because of this uh, subtract instruction, which is essentially allocating 16 bytes of data to hold buffer 1 and buffer 2. So the uh, if I look at the uh, contents of the registers, info uh, registers um, EIP, ESP and EPP, you see that there is a distance between the stack pointer and the corresponding base pointer. So this region between the stack pointer and the base pointer is the active frame for that particular function. Now within this particular region, uh, between uh, FFFF CF44 and FFFF CF54 is where the locals of this particular function resides. So we can look at the locals for this function using this uh, command info locals and we see that there are two locals specified in this function. So buffer 1 and buffer 2. Uh, we can also look at the address of buffer 1 and buffer 2 as follows like p which is a print slash x and ampersand buffer 1 would provide the address for buffer 1. Similarly p slash x and uh, change it to buffer 2 would specify the address for buffer 2 and what we see over here is that buffer 1 and buffer 2 is both within the stack frame that is both are within this stack pointer and the base pointer. Now uh, let us get back to the disassembly and uh, what we see is that there are two instructions remaining. One is the leave instruction and then the return instruction. The leave instruction essentially restores the stack frame uh, such that the old uh, frame corresponding to the previous function, in this case the main function is restored and the return would then return back to the main function. So let us see these happening. So I can do single uh, instruction 3 which would uh, in execute 3 instructions and what we see is that the execution has gone back to the main function. Now uh, as before we could also verify this, we could look at the various registers and we see that uh, the instruction pointer now uh, points to somewhere in main. In fact, uh, it is pointing to the function soon after the call, which is this, which corresponds to the add function. And uh, what we also see is that the uh, stack pointer and the base pointer have moved up in the stack. So now we have completed executing execution of that particular function. And we have, since we have moved back to the main function, so the active frame now is corresponding to that for the main function. So all the local variables if any that are present in the main would be would come back and would, would actually be active over here. So GDB is one of the best uh, debugging softwares that are available. It is freely available and uh, what we've actually captured is just a small glimpse of what GDB can do. So uh, you could also search and we will also try to share a document which comprises of uh, all the various commands the GDB has and you could actually try various uh, things with GDB and uh, also try to do such debugging with various other programs using GDB, look at the various registers and see how the stack and other local variables are maintained. Thank you.